Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Well, Comet Neowise is putting on quite a show in the evening sky. And last video, I showed you a few images I had taken from Chicago. Well, last week, when we didn't have a video, I had a chance to get to a much darker sky and got some great images from there. I want to show you a few of those, give you an idea of what's possible to see and what's possible to capture still with this comet. And uh, then we'll get on to other things in the sky to look for as well. So this first image is taken from suburban skies using a DSLR with a slightly longer exposure. This next one was taken from very dark skies with a DSLR camera and a telephoto lens. Although I had it on a tracking mount so I could do longer exposures, about 30 seconds without the stars trailing. And this picture I took from those dark skies with just my smartphone on an astrophotography setting. Neowise was visible from those dark skies with the naked eye, but binoculars were a huge help. Well, the comet is getting dimmer as it gets farther from the sun and earth, but it's also now nice and high up in the sky after sunset, and it remains well above the horizon for a lot of us once the sky is nice and dark. Things are getting slightly complicated by a brighter moon, which will be full next week. But I would recommend, if you haven't seen this comet yet, get out as soon as you can. The next clear night you've got, get to the darkest skies you can with some binoculars, and give it a shot. All right, I want to turn our attention once more to the southern sky now. We'll take a peek at Saturn and Jupiter, and talk about the constellations that they appear against. This is a picture I took last week. You can see the much brighter Jupiter and still quite bright Saturn in the southern sky. We've talked quite a bit about these two planets over the last couple of videos, so check those out from July 8th and July 15th for more information on the planets themselves and also what you can expect to see through binoculars or a small telescope. Well, right now, both Jupiter and Saturn are in the constellation of Sagittarius, the Archer. The most recognizable portion of this constellation is the asterism known as the Teapot. We've mentioned this asterism before, but now is a great time of the year to see it. It's well positioned in the south as the sky gets dark. This marks a relatively small section of the full constellation, which shows a centaur archer, half human, half horse, and the teapot marks the bow and arrow. Now, this is sometimes confused with the constellation Centaurus, the centaur, which is most easily seen in the southern hemisphere. The arrow of Sagittarius points toward Antares, the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. Well, this can be seen in a couple of different ways. It's either revenge for Scorpius, having slain Orion, or to protect nearby Hercules, should Scorpius ever decide to attack. Well, Scorpius is now in full view, from the claws all the way down to the curve of the tail and the stinger at the very end. Bright Antares shines a little bit dimmer than Saturn, with a distinctly reddish, orangish glow. The color comes from the star's temperature, it's cooler than the blue or white stars that we see elsewhere in the sky. So color relates to the temperature of stars, kind of the opposite of your faucet at home with the temperature of the water. For stars, blue means hot, and red means still hot, but not as hot. The surface temperature of Antares is about 5,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Now compare that to our sun, which has a surface temperature of about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So Antares is cooler, but it's also much bigger than our sun. Antares is a red supergiant star, so huge that if it were placed in our solar system, it would swallow up all the planets out to Mars. Scorpius and Sagittarius frame a beautiful part of the Milky Way galaxy in the south during the summer months. I like to imagine the beautiful band of the Milky Way as the steam coming out of the spout of the teapot. From dark skies on a moonless night, it's just a majestic view. Summertime in the Northern Hemisphere is the best time of the year for viewing the Milky Way. That's because its brightest sections are highest in the sky at this time. I've seen it many times before, but each and every time I'm reminded of what an amazing view it really is. 
the Milky Way, this band of hazy light across the sky, is our view of our galaxy from the inside. Every star we see with the naked eye is part of the Milky Way galaxy, but we see most of those stars along that band of light. That's the plane of our galaxy. If we zoom out, we can get a sense of how the galaxy would look from the outside, a view we've never actually seen, but we've been able to map our galaxy from the inside. And this is a pretty good guess as to what it might look like. The sun is in the disk of the Milky Way. We're about two thirds of the way out from the center of the galaxy. If you think of this like a pizza, one slice of pepperoni on that pizza, that's a good approximation of how much of the galaxy we see with the naked eye. Now, as big as the galaxy is, it's also pretty flat, just like a pizza or maybe a pancake. We see pancake in every direction as we look out in the night sky, but there's more pancake to be seen along that plane of the galaxy, along the disk. Now, that's especially true as we look towards the center. The center of our galaxy lies in the direction of Sagittarius. In fact, the very center is just off the spout of the teapot. It's in this location where scientists have found evidence of a supermassive black hole, millions of times the mass of our sun, and around which the entire Milky Way revolves. Imagine that. We think about the Earth orbiting the sun. Have you ever wondered what the sun orbits around? Turns out, it's a supermassive black hole. So I can't recommend it highly enough. If you have a chance to get out there to a dark sky on a moonless night and see the Milky Way, ideally over the rest of the summer or the early part of the fall, it's a fantastic view. It's well worth the effort to get to a dark sky and see it as it's meant to be seen. Well, the moon tonight is well situated right near Antares. Now this will spoil any dark sky views right now, but the moon is always a great target for binoculars or even a small telescope. It's just past first quarter tonight. It'll be making its way across this part of the sky over the next few nights, on its way to a full moon on August 3rd. Now of note especially is it'll be kind of in between Saturn and Jupiter on the night of August 1st. So a lot of great stuff to get out there and see. We hope you have a chance to do it and enjoy this beautiful night sky that we all share. Next week, we'll be back with uh, some information about the Perseid meteor shower coming up in August. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe and look up with us every Wednesday. Also follow the Adler Planetarium on social media. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.